So have you wondered uh, about a number of the health things you see going on in our society today? For example, the ongoing opioid crisis, the fires, how are these fires you know, affecting our health? Of course, coronavirus does not need to be said, is a public health issue that we really need more people to have training in infectious disease public health research to try to address these problems. But there's also other things going on. For example, how can we encourage families and communities to stay healthy during the pandemic and more generally so they can be resilient and, and cope effectively? Other questions in public health include, how are we caring for those most vulnerable in society like seniors? What are we doing to promote their health from a public health perspective? And how are we spending our healthcare dollars? Are we doing it in a way that promotes the health of our populations the best? What role can non-pharmaceutical uh, things like yoga, like supplements, what can they do to promote the health of people? racism, what can we do about racism in society, and importantly, how is it impacting people's health and well-being? And our childhood experiences. For those of us in this room, what role did your childhood play, positive things and negative things, that could contribute to who you are today, your health today, your well-being today? So if you're interested in any of those things I just said and others, then perhaps our MSc in public health is for you. We have a number of experts working in our faculty who are experts in this field of public health who study these things. And so you can see uh, different examples here. Um, for myself, I study how social experiences impact our health. I publish a lot on racism in particular and how experience of racism impacts not just our psychological health, but also our physical health, how it impacts blood pressure, how it impacts um, our inflammation in the body and our stress hormones. So that was just be an example for myself, but we have many experts and they're not all here listed. We have many people in our faculty who you could work with in an MSc to provide you with the training you're looking for. And so our new MSc in public health program launched in 2019. We currently have 12 students in the program and we're accepting more students. If you enroll in this program, you're going to gain specific skills in the field of epidemiology. So how do we understand from a research perspective what's driving our health? How do we get ahead of the coronavirus? This is all, a lot of this is based on epidemiologic and biostatistical principles. You, we have a specific grad course just on how we track infectious disease and control infectious disease in populations. We have special courses in this program on program evaluation. So all these public health programs we have rolling out for coronavirus, but also, as I said, to promote physical activity, to promote hand washing, to get people to eat healthy. All of these are public health programs. And so in our um, new MSc, we're really help, trying to help you learn um, how we create such programs. How do we evaluate them? How do we budget them? Uh, we also have a specific grad course on health policy and ethics. So we think about all the health policies we're seeing related to coronavirus. How did those come about? How were they thought through? What evidence are they based on? These are the things we cover in our program. Also study design. So how do we design studies? How do we track participants? And how do we report these findings in, in scientific journals? How do we write these findings up? How do we report them to government? These are all the things that we talk about in our program. We also have a specific practicum course to give you hands-on experience so that you, well, I'll talk about that in just a minute. Maybe I'll just show you sort of how the the program space. So basically we have six courses in our program. The first five um, are among, you get to, you, there's four basic courses and then there's one you can choose that's a practicum to really give you that hands-on experience. So after you finish five of our courses or four of our courses, perhaps you might choose, let's say you want to be an epidemiologist or do program evaluation. You want to get a job in government. Our one course practicum will help place you in a practicum 
um, based on what you want, you know, we will help set that up for you to do 112 hour practicum, let's say in the Alberta government or, you know, for the Public Health Agency of Canada. So you can get strong reference letters before you graduate to help you get a job. And then I think what's really important about our program is you have to do a thesis. And I say have to. But a thesis is what gives you the hands-on training to do research. If you just learn about research in a book, it's not enough to do research. You've got to get your hands dirty. You've got to practice research. It's like driver's ed, just reading the manual about it, but never driving. You really can't drive, right? You can read all the books about driving that you like, but until you start driving, you can't really drive. And it's the same with research. You have to do it to learn it. And that's why programs like ours that have a thesis, we believe are so important for you in terms of you, you being be able to compete in the job market for research type jobs because you have the experience. So we have four core courses in the program, advanced epidemiology, biostatistics, this applied research methods course to really learn how we you know, get started in research. And then that program evaluation course, how do we plan public health programs? How do we implement them, budget them, and evaluate them afterward? So all students who enter into our MSc in public health must complete these four courses. Then they, but in total, they're completing six, you're going to complete six courses, but you get to pick from two from this green list. I mean, I recommend a lot of students do the practicum as one of their choices because it's such a great way to get jobs after your MSc. But again, you can see there's lots of choices. It's actually a pretty hard decision. A lot of our students are picking our applied infectious disease course because, of course, of coronavirus, this is going to give you that training and how do we manage outbreaks like this going forward. If you're worried about your writing ability, you know, in grad studies, you do have to write to a high level. So we, there's a specific graduate course offered at our university to teach this graduate level writing. So if you're nervous about your writing, we have a course you can choose specifically to get you to that grad level writing that uh, that you need to write a thesis. Okay, so that's a bit about those courses. Um, and then of course, that hands on research experience. So most of our students would do their coursework in year one and begin, you know, thinking about their thesis, their coursework helps you kind of think about well, what's my research question? And then in year two, you really spend your time uh, actually carrying out the thesis research and then graduate. It's about, a, it's usually for most students, a 24 month program, total full time. Of course, you can take longer if you need. Some of our students do take three years. You can get an extension or you can do the program part time. We have a number of students doing it as a four year program. So they're taking their courses, maybe one a term, going slow because they have to work. They're working professionals and that is not a problem for us. And then, as I mentioned with the thesis, our goal is try to help you, if possible, it's not required to graduate, but to try to help you publish your research. So here are some examples from students that I've supervised in MSCs um, who I've worked with as their, their thesis supervisor to try to help them publish their research, their thesis, so it doesn't just, you know, this big write up in a, in a library, but it's actually written up in a short version as well that people can read uh, through journals on the internet. So yeah, I personally have an MSc and I found because I it included a lot of practical experience like this program, I was able to get a job in government quite quickly. And so we've really tried to design this program, not just for you to, you know, you could do a PhD based on this program. Absolutely, it would give you the training to move in and be competitive when you're applying for a PhD. But we've also designed this program so that people who don't want to move on yet or, or ever, but just really want an MSc so they can get those more, those higher paying jobs in, in um, government, for example, in nonprofits to do epidemiologic research and other types of research um, that you're going to get those skills. And so if you are interested, there's three windows for you to apply. You can apply February 1st or May 1st if you'd like to start September. So if you were interested in starting September 2021, you could apply for February 1st or May 1st. 
And if you're interested in the January start, so say you were interested in January 2022, you could apply in October. Now, how to apply to this program? The thing about a master's with a thesis in, in our program is you do require a thesis supervisor when you're applying. So you need to reach out to potential people who could supervise you for your thesis first and secure them as your supervisor. So have an idea of what you want to study and then you can approach faculty members within the Faculty of Health Sciences. You just send them an email. There's even a portal through the Grad Studies website. I think Michaela could show us where that is, where you could um, contact them that way or you could just try to get their emails uh, through the university directory and contact them. Once you have a supervisor in place, then you would submit to apply your transcripts from your different universities. We're looking for a minimum of a 3.0 GPA from your last 20 courses. So if you've taken 30 courses, it's only the most recent 20 that would count. Your GPA will be calculated uh, for you. That last 20 courses will be calculated by the university. People under 3.0 um, wouldn't be eligible usually. Uh, you would need to write a letter of intent that explains here's the area I'm really interested in these wildfires and how they're impacting people's health and what we can do about it. You know just like a general area oh, I'm interested in the overdose crisis and what we need to do about opioids or I'm interested in coronavirus and I want to understand um, that type of work what we do to control coronavirus so you, you kind of want to specify what you're interested in uh, in that letter of intent then you would submit a resume we call it a curriculum vitae which is meaning your resume would only include the parts um, of your previous experience related to this degree so if you worked as a cashier somewhere you wouldn't put that on cv it would just be um, any academic related experience that you want to include and then three references two of which need to be academic and then your supervisor would submit a letter of support alongside your, like with once you submit, they would be prompted to submit a letter of support saying they've agreed to supervise you. And as I said, we have a number of people you can choose from, Julia Brislato, myself, Cheryl Curry, Sylvia Casso, Richard LaRoche, he's the one on the bike, um, Brenda Loon and Namesh Patel are just some examples, but there's others on our website you can take a look at that you could work with, um, that you could approach. Who have we have people? We're lucky in health sciences. We have people with so many interesting research studies going on that you could uh, perhaps be a part of. So this is a part of our website, um, so you can see just some information about the program. Um, our courses are delivered in person and. Um, right now they're online, of course, because of the coronavirus, but um, they are typically delivered in person on campus at the University of Lethbridge. So that is our MSc in Public Health. But before I go, I just want to tell you about two more things. The first is I'd like to uh, talk about uh, one certificate. We have two graduate certificates of, that I'd like to speak to you about because we created these specifically for those of you who might not be ready to embark on a whole master's of science yet. You know, you think, oh, two years of my life, six courses, it's a lot, I have to find supervisors, it seems stressful. Some people find that stressful. Um, so we created a separate option just for you. Now these two certificates can ladder you directly into the MSc because the four courses you would complete in each of the two certificates I'm about to explain um, are the exact courses you need to do the MSc. So if you do a graduate certificate with us and then later you want to do the MSc, not a problem. You wouldn't have to retake those courses. As long as you got a good grade, uh, a passing grade in them, they would count towards your MSc. So you could ladder in that way. These two certificates do not require a supervisor for you to apply because there's no thesis. So the first certificate in, you would learn to design and coordinate um, epidemiologic studies. Oh, I have a weird thing here. Oh, well, we'll just pretend it's not there. You would learn to track infectious and chronic disease. How do we track coronavirus? How do we track um, increasing diabetes rates in our society, for example? Um, and you would learn to analyze big data. We have all these big data sets coming out. How do we, what types of software do we use to analyze them and try to look at patterns in that um, work? 
And so in this program, there's four courses you would take. Three are required. They are the advanced epi course, Biostats 1 and Biostats 2. And then you would choose one elective. And so we have two choices that you can pick from for this specific certificate. This, these certificates do not include, as I said, a thesis. They also don't include practicum option. So that's the first one. Now the second one, let me see if I can get this to play. Well, oh, I don't know if I can. I think you can see my screen still, right? I just want to play, I wanted to play this while I'm talking because I think it's a really good example of a public health education program for parents during coronavirus. This is from the Centers for Disease Control. And so this is an example, when I worked in government, I actually had to help make these programs. I had training in program evaluation, I had training in research methods, and I actually had to, I'll play one more time in case you missed it, I actually had to work as part of my job to create these and understand what content to use to help change people's behavior related to a certain health outcome and then um, evaluate them. And so our second certificate that we created is really focused on this. How do we design and implement these public health programs? Government is looking for people with this training. Um, how do we do program evaluation? How do we look at health policy? So we think about the mask policy. You hear criticisms, but there is a lot of science behind mask use. So how do we evaluate that science? And then how do we take that science and inform the policies that we ask the public to follow for various things, seat belts, airbags, masks currently, et cetera. And then what are the ethics around that? So um, our policy course also includes a lot of talk about ethics. What are public health ethics? Is it ethical? You know, um, currently with coronavirus, that's, it's a big issue, right? Because this is so new for all of us. So what do we do to ensure we're putting in policies that protect the public's health in general, but that are also ethical? So it, it's, it takes a lot of thinking and training to learn that. So this new certificate, both of the certificates launch first will be, uh, the first cohort will be September 2021. So the, as I said, the MSC is already underway. We're already accepting people into that program, um, but the certificates will launch in September. So this certificate has three required courses, um, health policy and ethics, obviously, and then that program planning implementation and evaluation course, and then that applied research methods course. And then you can choose, um, do you want to do biostatistics? Do you want to take our course on infectious disease? Or do you want to think about health systems from a more global perspective um, so that we can think about how works, for example, I keep using coronavirus because it's in the news, but you know, how are we um, dealing with coronavirus in this country compared to policies in other countries? So you know, a uh, course that really gives you more of a global perspective. So it's a hard choice because they're all awesome. But four courses. Yeah, so here's my last slide. So basically in our, um, uh, the School of Grad Studies, we have these three new options for you. You can think about the MSc in Public Health. It's called the Public Health Specialization. Again, that has six courses with a thesis. You do require that supervisor and you have three intake dates. Or you could think about our graduates should get an epi and biostats, only four courses, no supervisor, no thesis, two intakes, same with this graduate certificate in program and policy planning and evaluation. So a lot to think about, but, and I'll just make that note again, that if you take one of our certificates and then down the road want to do our MSc in public health, you don't have to repeat those courses. You'd only have two courses left in your MSc and then you'd have to do the thesis. So it really is a nice laddering option for those who aren't ready to make the leap. So that's all I have to say, so thanks so much.